When I first walked on stage, opening night, I was terrified. This is on the festival stage, right? Yeah. At Stratford. So there's the thrust stage, which has its own, I don't want to say rules about where you walk, but it has a certain discipline you got to play. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you had to stay in line with the vomitorium. They go the stair, the ramps that go down off the stage and down below when the cross rounds in the tunnels. You have to stay in line with the actors lined up that way so that every bit of the audience can see you. And Scott Wentworth kept wandering around back and forth, so I kept wandering back and forth with him. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to keep him between me and the mom. Richard said, Scott, for Christ's sake, stay still. I know there were a couple of them were trying to throw me off doing stuff, and I just said, fuck you guys. You know. Really? Yeah. They were playing games with you? Yeah. All these grand characters here. Yeah, oh, I just first yeah. time on the stage. Yeah. Let's give them a little twist. First here. time on the stage, my ass. Yeah. Wow. I got something that they don't. I got a Dora. <laughs> <laughs> so you were terrified stepping out. Was this a preview or was this opening? It was opening night. Because and I forgot a lot of the dialogue in the courtroom scene. And. Uh, Thank God for Severin Thompson. She just railroaded through the thing without me making these little, they were just little side comments anyway. Oh, what a nice fellow. Oh, what a good guy. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, it's just stuff like that. But she railroaded through the whole thing, which made it made more sense to me. Why should he be mouthing off these stupid comments about her? And say, Why were you terrified? Because uh, I started to think about all the fabulous talent that had graced that stage. And uh, I was the prize hog that year, if you will. <laughs> Were you a token? The, hmm? Were you a token piece of casting? No, I, well, this happened one night. Richard, Richard Manette, God rest his soul, he loved that guy. But he was after me to go to Stratford years before that to do something or other. And I said, no, I'm, I just, I, no, I can't see it. But my wife and I were downtown at a restaurant and by Jesus, through the door comes Manette. And he walks over and he sits down at the table next to us. And I said, good evening, Richard. And he went, oh, it's good evening. It's very good. And the, he didn't know who he was because it was dark and we couldn't really see, but I recognized him. He went outside for a cigarette and I said, I'll be right back. I went outside for a cigarette and I said, Richard, you probably don't remember me. Oh, of course I remember you, you're uh, uh, Graham Green. Yes, yes, I was about to say that. Yes, I, oh, yes, I tried to get you at Stratford. What would you say if I asked to come to be on the stage during your last year? Oh, that would be wonderful. So that happened. Then they had he had me by the, the pant leg like a bull terrier and he wouldn't let they wouldn't let go. That was it. The slippery slope down the funnel to the talent. <laughs> In you go. And uh, we had to go and do all these interviews. They went up to the offices in Toronto and the guy said, Here's how you deal with the press. They're going to ask you these questions. They'll ask maybe four or five in the questions in a row. You got to know how to. I said, buddy, listen. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been dealing with more press than you've seen. So this waiting is this meeting is just a big waste of time for you. This was a Stratford uh, thing to say we got to, you know, tune Graham up to how to deal with press. How to deal with press? <laughs> what? They do that with everybody. Really? Yeah, and they give you the don't throw up on the main street and show up drunk downtown and things like that, blah, 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 because you're giving the festival a black name. Behave yourselves.